Hey guys, welcome to this reaction. This was brought to my mind by one of my guitar students who wanted to learn some Nirvana. They mentioned to me this acoustic, unplugged version of their songs, which I had never seen or heard before. I obviously know Nirvana and I love their music. So when I discovered this, I was like, I need to check this out. And in doing so, I'd like to share this with all of you. So this is me, first time hearing The Man Who Sold the World, MTV Unplugged. Let's go. Oh, some distortion in there anyways. Ah, okay. We passed upon the stairs. Spoken walls and well. What a sound. Voice. I spoke into his eyes, I thought you died alone, oh. a long, long time ago. Oh my god. Oh no, not me, we never lost control, the face to face, the love <laughs> so Made my way back home I searched for a former land For years and years I roamed I gazed a gaze and stared We must have million years <laughs> I must have died alone A long, long time ago Okay, let me pause here. <sighs> so I discovered this song when I was probably 13, but I was playing in the school band. We played the song and our teacher introduced us to Nirvana and everything, but hearing it now with so many more years of experience in the music world makes me appreciate it so much deeper. So I hope I can uh, pass something of, of that onto you as well. So first thing I heard when, when it started is that the lick that he's playing is played on a distorted guitar and he's holding acoustic, right? So that's weird. If you look at his guitar, he has these magnetic pickups under the strings. So basically there's three ways of capturing acoustic guitar via pickups and one of them is this so-called piezo, which is usually under the bridge here. One of them is just having a microphone inside and the third one is to use kind of electric guitar pickups under the strings here, the magnetic ones. So that's why he can run it through a distortion and have this heavy distorted sound. Here again, magnetic pickup as well to add a little bit of that texture. And here the bass player here you can see acoustic bass, four strings, drummer plays with those softer sticks. They're combined with multiple thin sticks. They, they sound much softer, uh, so that all goes with that un unplugged vibe. I mean, what a performer, right, Kurt? Like, his singing is just so on point. It's just so without any worrying about technique or anything like that. It's pure expression. That's why he's such a huge personality, unfortunately was such a huge personality in the world of music, songwriting, performing. The chord progression is so unique and interesting yet sounding so simple. They're not afraid to throw in like an unexpected chord. I always admire music that is simple enough for people to go and sing the chorus and enjoy the lyrics and enjoy the simplicity of the melody, but at the same time interesting for musicians. So. When you're listening to it, you're like, oh, okay, what's this? How did they think about this thing? And so it can kind of please both crowds, if you know what I mean, the casual listener and music geek like myself. Let's finish this and then 
now let's analyze a couple of those sections more deeply. <laughs> Solo. Fingers almost like Django Reinhardt. I think he, he like did a little mistake there in the solo, did you hear that? Where, where, where is this? Here, he like kind of misses the n <laughs> See, so... He wanted to go to this note, but he won't... Oh no, oh here. Hard to say if he did it on purpose, but I think it's probably he, he kind of just missed that note and then uh, fluid, it made it into a passing note. I actually uh, talked about this on my brand new podcast, check it out. It's called In The Groove and I had my first guest last week there. We talked about music improvisation and how when you mess up a note and, and it's kind of slightly off when you want it to be, uh, you just make it into a passing note and move to the next note through there. So I think that's what he did here. Let's listen again. Yeah. Such a simplistic melodic solo. Let's look at the section when they're playing this. In my way. The scale sounding uh, thing. There's this note, which makes it B. Mix all it in. So basically, B chord is a dominant chord going to E major. Um, the mixolydian scale goes with those dominant chords, so... Not quite major, major would be... But this is one note different, and then... E major scale, basically. B. And then... E. And then C surprising chord and then back to E and then again and then back to just basically G sharp minor so for musicians out there for example that C chord what is it doing there it's just like totally out of that key just the B and semitone above we have C just move this chord, basically, this major, B major chord, move semitone higher, and it breaks you out of it, but I don't think he thought, oh, I'm getting out of the key or whatever. He just felt it needed that moment of surprise when he was writing that song. You know, sometimes when you writing write songs on the guitar, you just move your hand around the fretboard, and your hand can just lend itself somewhere randomly. If you're open and perceptive of the sound that's coming out of your guitar, you might be like, oh, that actually sounds pretty interesting. Despite the fact that I'm pretty geeky in terms of uh, music theory and guitar chords and all that, I still write like this. I let myself be led by my hands or by my ears and don't necessarily overthink things. Theory can come handy where I get stuck with the melody, harmony and things like that. Hope this was interesting for you a little bit. Let me know in the comments what are your thoughts, whether you're a songwriter yourself or whether you're just appreciator of music, uh, whether you enjoy this and would like me to react to some more 
of the songs from this unplugged session. If you like to request your reactions as well, go to the Buy Me A Coffee website and submit your requests there. Thanks again for this one. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, leave your comments below, give this video a like if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep it funky. Whew.